There is so much stuff in the academy (laughs) to choose from and there's so much support in there so that we've got our connection. But I have to create that and that's my organizational problem. What am I going to do? What am I going to create? So I just create more and more content, which is kind of a problem. So there is so much content in there and people are like, where do I start? Like you only depend to what you need when you need it. That's, you know, our connection is there, our co-working. We're working together to make sure that you get this, get done what you need to get done in a group you know with a group of like-minded individuals hello and welcome mentoring with geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths nutritionists herbalists and practitioners this podcast responds directly to your needs the needs of the practicing natural therapist With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello everyone, welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How are you today? So what I thought I'd talk about today was packing it all in because I don't know about you, but there are people that I look at and I go, how do they do that? How do they manage to see that many clients in a week? How do they manage to run their business so efficiently? How do they manage to pack it all in? I'm so disorganized. I can't do anything. I can't get it done. I feel inadequate. So if I feel like that after 30 years in healthcare and after 17 years in business, it makes me think, well, you've got to be feeling it as well in some way or at some point on some days more than on others, because I certainly feel it some days and not on others. So today I've sat down and I've just started hammering through the work. I've got my coffee. I like a dirty chai. I have got my, I've finished my dirty chai. I got my drink ready for the day and I sat down and I thought I am going to hammer through some work. Where am I behind? Well, I'm behind on podcasts. I am behind on my red flag. So I've started a very short even shorter than these, series on red flags in practice. So when we see someone with abdominal pain or pelvic pain or palpitations or whatever it is, so that we've got a bit of a heads up, something we can quickly check and have a listen to. And that's going to be available to everyone in my graduate mastery program and everyone in my next level program. So, and it means, you know, more CPE because, or CBD, whatever you call it, because it's clinical. So I just thought it's going to be really handy to have a quick listen to something so that you know where to start looking, what to start researching. Now, I'm behind in that, and I'm behind in the academy things that I'm doing at the moment because if you've been listening you know that we did programs and practice in May and now we've got our immersion and every week we're doing something different so I've actually got a little list here let me just read off my little list what we've done um you can still join and there's you know there's no such thing as catching up because there's no such thing as being behind so we started out with the programs and practice study day and that's all been broken down into smaller portions so it can be watched it's all recorded Then we had finding our ideal client. Now I've got a lot of resources about finding and working at our ideal client. I've got a spreadsheet. I've got videos. I've got discussion pieces. There is a lot there about figuring out your ideal client. And it's something that we have to go back to all the time because we change our style changes and our client base changes over time as well as we change. Sometimes it stays exactly the same. Some people are very set in what they do, but even then they will continue continue to train and research in that area. So how they work changes. It might be that they start to have a more specialized group coming in to see them, even though they've been a specialist in the area. And so our ideal client changes over time. Then this week was the photo shoot week. Or when you're listening to it, that's last week, actually. So the photo shoot week, um, make, going out and taking selfies. Now I cheated and I got my daughter to take my photos because I knew I didn't have time. And so any friend to go out and take the photos and there's all of the photos that we need and how we have So lots of fun. And then we talk about it in the group and I do a live in the Academy Facebook group in the closed group as well. Now this week it's bio and backstory because we have to have our bio sorted. We've got to have our backstory sorted. Why are you doing what you do? What motivated you to be here? Now on top of doing this immersion, which is why it's weekly, not every single day, because challenges can be too challenging. We've got too much on. I've done lots of challenges in the past 
And we just have so much that we've got to do. Everyone falls off because they've got so much that they've got to do. Whereas doing it this way, I'm hoping with the weekly emails, with the weekly support, with everything going into the Facebook group, with the connection and the communication, that we're really going to be able to get these things done or to be able to say, well, actually, I've done that bit. I don't have to revisit that. Um, Actually, some new photos would be a great idea. I've done my bio. I've got that. I've double checked what she's got. That's okay. But my backstory could really do with some tweaking. Actually, I've got my backstory. This week, I might turn that into a blog. So with this ongoing support and this help within the academy, we're slowly building up towards, not necessarily, you know, lots of people don't want a program for their practice. Some people do, but some people, all of this stuff is just for the promotion of you and having things ready to go, which I think is really important, having things ready to go that we can use them. Then we're going to be We've got to look at that opt-in. So I've created lots of opt-ins over the years. If you go to www.geraldineheadley.com, you will see my burnout webinar. And that's free. It's an opt-in because you can watch it. You opt in by giving me your email address. So you are on Podia. So you would get Podia emails. And that means that I, you've given me your email address and I've given you something. I've given you CPD points and I have given you a lot of background knowledge on the understanding of burnout. And so that's great, isn't it? So it's a true trade. And a lot of people watch it. Thankfully, when I recorded it, I'm not recorded on it because I recorded it years ago. And yeah, I would have had bad hair then. So my hair's much nicer now, I think. So uh, (laughs) then after we've mapped out our offer, then we're looking at social media. So we've taken those photos we've thought about our offers we've worked out our headlines and everything so it means we can get that social media with some fresh photos you know taking them yourself is fine we all need professional photos every so often but for a long time I used my own photos and you know our cameras are so good our phones our cameras on our phones are so good if you've got an SLR camera go you but I've just got my phone and so when I was out with my daughter she took some on her camera on her phone she took some photos of me on my phone and we actually just went to the mall and took photos around the mall so that I had different lighting and different space to what people would see here in my office. Then we're going to look at increasing our audience a week after that. So that, you know, we're way down into July here and we're looking at our audience conversions, but also the emails that would go with an opt-in so that the system of what people get after they've opted into something, what emails they'll receive then we're going to create our week one for our program. So it's a long way down the line because people can get stumped writing their program if they start too early. And that can be what the stop is rather than, you know, sorting it all out, working out what it's going to be, which we've done right at the beginning. And then towards the end, actually writing that first module. And then of course, we've got our launch. So if we're creating a program, the launch might just be the launch for the opt-in. There is so much stuff in the academy (laughs) to choose from. And there's so much support in there so that we've got our connection. But I have to create that. And that's my organizational problem. What am I going to do? What am I going to create? So I just create more and more content, which is kind of a problem. So there is so much content in there. And people are like, where do I start? like, you only depend to what you need when you need it. That's, you know, our connection is there, our co-working. We're working together to make sure that you get this, get done what you need to get done in a group, you know, with a group of like-minded individuals. So how do I get it all done? Organization, timing myself. I do have a timer with, you know, it shows how long and it works out. It doesn't tick. Um, I have used my phone, but as soon as I touch my phone, to set the timer, of course, it shows me all the notifications. I have all my notifications silenced, but they'll all be on that front screen. So as soon as I pick it up, I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Immediately, I'm distracted. So I found that actually getting a clock that was totally separate to my phone meant I didn't touch my phone. So I'm spending a lot less time being distracted because I have no notifications come through on my laptop whatsoever. All notifications are silent, so I don't get anything. When I sit down at the beginning of the day, I do. I get, you know, it's somebody's birthday and you've got these things coming up. So that's the only notifications I get are calendar notifications. Nothing else comes up on my laptop to distract me or on this screen to distract me. I use a timer to set my time to sit down and work and I plan. I spend time planning. Super important. I know on Friday what I've got coming up next week. So last Friday, I just 
I couldn't get into it. I just really couldn't do it. I couldn't get my head down. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't create. So I thought, that's fine. Hubby's at work on Sunday. I'm going to sit down and do it all on Sunday. I'm actually, I'm going to make that choice and I'm going to have a day off because that's what we need to do. It's like um, when you've listened to the other podcasts, I've talked about making a choice, choosing how you spend, you know, getting rid of habits, changing habits is about choice. And so sometimes working for ourselves and doing, you know, what we need to do in our business, that's a choice isn't it? So I made the conscious choice on Friday. I was just prevaricating. I was procrastinating. I could feel it. You know, I'd done dishes. I put laundry in. I'd done all of the things that normally I do those things very, very quickly. I will fling in a load of laundry, come and work. I look at the time. Okay, it's going to take an hour. I've got a front loader, so it's going to take an hour and a half to do that. I'll come and sit down. I'll set a timer, an hour and a half, and then I will go. So that's my break. But I wasn't behaving like that on Friday. So I thought, no, don't do it. Just stop. Stop pretending that you're working or that you're going to go to your office when you're clearly not going to go to your office in the front of the house. <laughs> Just do something else instead. So I repotted some plants. I went and did some shopping that needed doing. And I did all these really things that needed doing, but also things I enjoyed, like my house plants. So I went through and I did lots of those. I discovered some more fungus gnat in one of the plants. So that's gone into quarantine. And I spent the day enjoying my Friday because Friday is my sort of official day off, but I often will end up working. So Sunday in the morning, I started prevaricating, but then I said to myself, you did this on Friday. You had your day off on Friday. Now go and do what needs doing. Sit down and do it. And I did. So it was, I had my lunch. So I didn't start early in the morning. I had my lunch and I sat down and I worked until 6 p.m. And I churned out a ton of of work, an absolute ton of work. The red flags in practice, I churned out a load more of those. So I've been recording those for everybody so that they've got more CPD and CPE points because mentoring gives you some CPE and CPD. It's always a set amount. Whereas your clinical stuff, if it's in there as well, then that's fantastic, isn't it? So I've been churning out red flags, the short recordings. So I've sat and I've done things that get me ahead and I sat down as well for my clients as, as I actually, I need to organize, you know, I've seen some clients recently. I need to make sure that I'm up to date with them. I've got a couple of clients that need prescriptions renewing. So I've got my list of things. I need to do a bit of shopping. I'm short of some herbs. What's on my list? Arjuna, some Cotinopsis and some Gynostema need to be ordered. So, you know, I sat down, I look at all these things. I'm like, right, how am I going to schedule my time? How am I going to set it all out? I need to podcast. I need to speak to you guys. I need to make sure that everything is up to date in the academy because that is my passion project. You know, I really want to make sure that you guys are all out there doing the job because every single person that you see changes so many more people. You know, you might think that you're affecting one person when you see that person one-to-one, -one, but you're not. You're affecting them, their family, everybody around them, all of the supply chains, because hopefully they're changing the food that they eat. Hopefully they're changing their lifestyle. Hopefully they're getting more exercise. So not only do you affect them, you affect the people around them as well. So epigenetically, you've got a huge impact on not just the one person, but on everyone and, and their subsequent children or on their children's children, whoever it is. So we need to think to ourselves, what is it I need to do? How can I structure that time and give myself treats at the end? Treats, not being food treats, although I do love a food treat, gotta say. Oh, salted caramel dark chocolate from Whitaker's, gotta say, lovely treat right there. <laughs> But other, other treats, are, it's not this week, it's raining this week, but sitting in the sun to have my lunch. That's a treat. I come out of my office. It's really good for your cortisol, isn't it? To sit in the sunshine for your lunch. It's really good to get that UVB on your skin so that you can convert that vitamin D. There's all of these things that are treats that don't cost us anything, don't cost our waistline anything and save our mental health. And how do I do that? I do that by making sure I've structured my time and structured my day and allowed myself to have days off when I need them and time off when I need it, because those are really important. If we're not looking after ourselves, then how can we look after others? So I'm going to leave it on that note, because that's the big reminder, isn't it? Looking after ourselves as well as looking after others. How are we going to make sure that we're doing that? All right. Well, it was lovely chatting and I look forward to catching up with you very soon.
See ya. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.